Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, yes, it's another drive time blog. I'm heading to work again and I thought I'd uh, just rant on again because quite a few people actually, um, I got a lot of feedback on the drive time rant and a lot of people thought it was a good idea. There are a few people who thought it wasn't a good idea, but oh well, I'll keep it on topic and here we go. Now, I've, I've actually got a new uh, camera mount for the window. It's really quite snazzy. I might have to take a photo of it. I don't know how it's going to work or not, but I'm actually filming this upside down. So I have to flip it back over in, uh, in the editing. So once again, I think I've got the settings correct, but ah well. We'll find out later. If it doesn't work, you won't see it. If it works, you'll see it. So, what I thought I'd talk about is um, something that always seems to come up in, uh, well, just everyday life. Uh, people ask, what do you do for a living? And well, <laughs> you say I'm an electronics design engineer. And the first reaction is that their eyes usually just roll in the back of their head and what? What is that? Something to do with computers? Uh, what is it? Um, and you know, you, you either you wait. Generally, I weigh up the person to see if they're the least bit interested, and um, if they're not, if it doesn't seem that they're the least bit interested in that at all, then I'll just say, "Ah, oh, I design computers," or uh, you know, I design robots, or I design, or I design mobile phones, or you know, something a bit more technical might be, or oh, I designed the circuit boards which go into computers and mobile phones, and they go, oh yeah, okay, and they nod and, you know, think that they understand, because most people have actually heard of circuit boards. So, you know, if you mention that, then that, that generally, right, okay, they sort of understand and get the drift. And then, a lot of the reaction you'll get is, Oh, so you can, so you fix TVs and things. And it's like, no, that's a TV repair technician. Well, that, that, that's a TV service technician. I'm, I, I actually design, and then you've got to say, I design TVs. Because otherwise, the, the, they just don't understand. They just don't get it. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's really awkward trying to explain being an electronics design engineer to someone. It's just... Yeah, you know, I've, I've got to come up with a, a decent comeback that I stick to all the time because usually I make something up on the spot because I'm taken back and uh, and I come up with something with a different sounding explanation every time. That's it's crazy. And then, yeah, I, you always ask if they hear you're an electrical engineer, an electronics engineer, or just sort of any sort of engineer, they go, oh, you can fix it. I've got a broken TV. My TV's broken. Can you take a look at it? Can you give me a quote on how much it is to fix? And then you've got to explain to them that, no, I can't really fix TVs. Oh, I could, but it would take me a very, very long time because I'm not familiar with them and, I'm, and I don't have access to the parts, really. Um, you know, you've got to explain to them that you have to that they should, they're much better off taking it to their local service tech who can, uh, TV service tech, who can who can fix the thing 10 times quicker than I can. Because that's that's just the way it is. This was actually brought up on the um, forum yesterday as, uh, you know, somebody asked, can I fix, um, you know, I'm, I'm, am I any good at fixing TVs and hi-fis and other bits of consumer gear? And well, the answer is um, uh, no, no. I'm I'm not ashamed to say that I suck at it um, because you know I'm very good at. I think I'm very good at troubleshooting things. But if it's something I'm not familiar with, if it's something I haven't um, seen before, then well, you're you're going to look like a turkey, and you're back to square one. You can go through the basics, of course, but uh, you know that doesn't really. Uh, help much because well, it, you know, you might find the fault easily, but if it's something more detailed, then uh, you know, a, a repair technician who's familiar with that gear, who does, who repairs them day in and day out, will be infinitely more 
um, efficient at finding and diagnosing and fixing the repair than I would. Um, you know, it's just that that's just the way it is. I mean, my my first job actually was um, well, part of my first job was testing and repairing, uh, testing and troubleshooting um, uh, closed circuit television um, CCTV slash video switching slash alarm equipment. Um, that was my that was my first job when I was seventeen, and um, and I got. I got very good at it. Um, it was a very niche product, and well, um, it's I could I could have easily said that at that particular time I was the best person in the world, the most efficient person in the world to fix that particular um, bit of gear because well I was the most familiar with actually repairing them. Uh, if, if I went back now, I'd. I'd be starting from square one, you know, that was that was uh, 20 years ago or so, and um, that's just the way it is, it's just because you're an electronics engineer, and just because you've, you know, you've, you've studied electronics and electrical design, doesn't, doesn't mean that you can fix stuff, uh, troubleshooting is an art in itself, it really is. Um, and, and you know there are basic uh, rules to follow. I mean, the the golden, the first rule of troubleshooting is thou shall test voltages. And well, that's the first thing you do. You check the voltages. You check the voltage rails and make sure everything's okay. And then you then you work from there. So there there are basic steps to troubleshooting gear. But you know, in, in in the end, it comes down to being intimately familiar that person is no matter how it doesn't matter if they're not educated at all they will beat the pants off you at troubleshooting that particular gear it's the same with design just because you've you know just because you've studied your degree or done your course or whatever um, you may have been studying elect you may have been doing electronics design for 40 years or something and it, and it makes no difference some guy can some uneducated guy can come along and will know something um, about a particular aspect of electronics design that that you won't because you've you've never you've never touched it or you haven't touched it in 20 years or you know you haven't studied it in since you know 1970 or something like that so uh, familiarity that's that's what it's all about